Yeah, well done. Last one before lunch. <laughs> I hope you can concentrate long enough. Um, so, hardware independence. It doesn't sound like the most interesting topic, so I'm impressed you all turned up. This is a good start. Um, but there's also a good reason why I said as a strategic choice, because this is not about what I can say about uh, hardware independence, it's what it can do for you. Hence, you'll never take our freedom. Okay, this is independence. My agendas are always quite straightforward. Um, what are we talking about? Why are we talking about it? How do we achieve it? And, uh, and finally, what do we need to think about? What are the implica implications? So there's a common theme. This is for you guys, it's not for me. This is not for what our developers can do. It's not, it's not why have we um, done something to make ourselves look clever. It's for your advantage. So the common theme is maximum value, minimum risk. And by value, I mean your value, the value you're adding to, uh, to applications. So, so far it sounds like a sales presentation. Um, what do I mean by value? I mean taking the basic components, making something which somehow has more, more value, more worth to the end user. Um, personally, I'd like a cow, but, but some of you would probably like the Rolls Royce as well. Um, and if we come through to your applications, what do we mean? Where's your value? Where are you adding the value? If you're buying cameras, you're buying lenses, you're buying cables, what are you adding? Well, what you're adding is your expertise, your time, your development. This is where you turn the cow into a Rolls Royce, or more likely, measuring the Rolls Royce. So what do we mean by hardware independence? Well, first of all, we assume we're talking about vision systems, otherwise you're in the wrong room. We're talking about the processing, the processing platform. So we're talking about PCs, or we're talking about uh, an embedded system, something like this. Um, so we have a choice, first of all. If we're talking about hardware independence for the processing platform, we could go for a PC. Um, you know, this is a compact PC or a full-size PC. Um, we have some idea of what's going on there. We know it has a, a, an x86, an Intel-style processor. Or we go for an embedded ARM processor, and we know there are differences in, that, in what these processors can do. So the ARM processor is a RISC, a reduced instruction set uh, chip, computer. Um, the one thing I'm not going to talk about is performance. There was another talk about embedded performance, so I'm not even going to touch on that. Um, so aside from platform independence, ooh, it disappeared we get to camera independence. So I'm using camera independence as a shorthand, because what I really mean is the whole acquisition part. So maybe I mean a, mean a camera, uh, maybe I mean something more than that. So this means cameras, frame grabbers, software. But I need to explain what that means as well. So we start with a camera. Maybe we're going to change from a Jai camera to a Teledyne Dulcer camera. Maybe we're going to change, maybe with the same sensor. Um, maybe we're going to change from area scan to line scan. Maybe we're going to, by doing this, we're also maybe taking a frame grabber rather than a, um, a gig E system or a USB 3 system. And then maybe something even more uh, fundamental as a change. Maybe we're going to 3D. Maybe we're going to hyperspectral. So this is what I mean by, by camera independence. What the acquisition independence means wherever you're getting the image from. And somewhere in there that you need some software as well. Things appear and disappear on this. It's good. OK, so platform independence, the first part, the processing system. Uh, PCs are the standard choice. We know this. PCs are easy. You can buy a PC everywhere. Uh, if you don't like your PC supplier, you go somewhere else. Dead easy. PCs give you maximum flexibility. This means if you want to add chips, uh, sorry, add um, a card, easy. There are always um, slots available. Uh, if you want to make an upgrade to your PC, more memory, maybe you even want to upgrade the CPU, 
these things are all fairly easy to do. Um, I think uh, most of us have the capability to build a PC. We generally choose not to, but if you have an idea of the components, you can up upgrade easily enough. PCs also give you the power. They give you the most uh, processing power. Um, that means not just um, i3, i5, i7, but it means you can go to multiple processors quite easily. Um, when I started out in this industry, we were using multiprocessor um, Apple workstations, Mac workstations. But PCs are well-known, they're well-supported. You also have a choice of operating systems, so Windows and Linux are the only two um, to talk about, really. And then we go over to Embedded. And I'm not going to give you a whole talk on Embedded, but what we're talking about is System on Chip, SOC. Um, and we'll assume we mean ARM processors. You still have a big choice of System on Chip retailers, You're just um, retail available SOCs. Uh, so even if you say, I've already decided what I'd like is a Jetson TX2, you still have a choice of carrier boards. And this will give you a number of USB 3 ports, a number of gig E ports, um, maybe more things as well. And beyond that, the self-designed self carrier boards and the self-designed chips. This is, something, this is where you have to think about something which has never really been a possibility for PCs. You wouldn't consider building your own motherboard, but you can build your own carrier boards easily enough. Um, and you can design your own chips based around a, an ARM design. This is a real book from ARM. Custom chips for dummies. Really exists. Um, so what do you get from embedded? Well, the, the usual things are size and shape. If you're designing your own carrier board, maybe you want a circular board. You know, you're not, you're not going to find a, a circular motherboard for a PC, but you could do that. Relatively less power, meaning processing power, but also less electrical power, fewer watts as well, but also less well-known. So there's, there's something of a learning um, gradient to come across here, and Linux only. So this is what we mean. You've maybe got an idea from the last slide that we're talking about PCs relatively easy and embedded relatively difficult. What this means is that developing and employing an embedded solution will be more work than a traditional PC-based solution, for most people at least. This means development time and cost is higher. But cost per system is lower. Duplication cost, much lower. If you think, um, I want to create one PC system, well, you start off with installing Windows, installing your application and everything it requires. Um, with, a, with an embedded system, you take an SD card, you copy it, and you put it into a new system. That is all. Nothing more. So somehow you have a higher startup cost, this is your development time, but a lower cost of, of duplication, your system cost. So what this means is there's quite a big barrier to get into the embedded market, but then the gradient here for multiples is lower. Compare it to PCs. These are completely made-up numbers. Don't quote me on the numbers. Um, so here, relatively lower development time and costs, but your cost per system is higher. So your cost to make more duplicates, to make an, another identical system, is higher. So this means your gradient is higher here, and a lower gradient there. And somewhere, these two are going to cross over. The numbers I've made, they cross over at about five systems. This is all very nice, but maybe the crossover isn't at five systems. Maybe the crossover is at 50 systems. In which case, let's say you develop for embedded, but you never actually sell 50 systems. You sell 20 systems. And then your boss comes back to you and says, why did you do embedded when we could have done PC cheaper? Well, better to um, make both methods work. Maybe develop cross-platform for PC and embedded. So what do we need to consider? 
Well, we consider, can consider Windows and Linux on PC. This gives us a, a little crossover as well. But also, we need some software that supports the x86 processors and ARM processors. This is the big one. And we know there are some differences. We already touched on them. So you need to have some knowledge of the differences between platforms. Or you can ignore it if you take some things into account. You could develop using Visual Studio, use C++, if you have no GUI. That makes it really easy. Um, the problem is that most end users, if you give them a vision system, they'd quite like to see an image. So we have to think about the user as well as the, the processing. So we get onto GUI applications as well. So uh, Qt, Qt um, is a, a framework which lets you do cross-platform GUIs. Uh, it's not too difficult to use. Um, the Mono project also lets you use .NET on Linux. So this is a way, this, this lowers the bar even further. And finally, Python is inherently multi-platform. So you can think about how you're developing in order to get to, uh, to cross-platform compatibility. So camera or acquisition independence, what does this mean? First of all, why do we care? We know what we want. Um, one of the things I do is, is I give the uh, introduction to machine vision training, where the first thing we do is say, how do you decide what camera you want? Well, we can calculate the resolution you need, we can calculate the speed of the camera you need, we can calculate the exposure time. <coughs> so you quickly get to the preferred camera. What's the problem? You know, you, it's fairly obvious if you need color or, or mono. Um, it might be fairly obvious if you need area scan or line scan or 3D or hyperspectral. So why should we be independent of camera? Well, the problem is there are still lots of solutions to your, your uh, shortlist. But let's say you choose a camera. You find one. Maybe it's the camera you've always used. Maybe it's the, the vendor you've used before. And you start developing. Consider the worst case. You make an application that can only use one camera model. And then your camera vendor brings out version two and nothing works. I would like to tell you this is theoretical. It's not. It has happened. I've seen it happen. I've seen people go this color. You need to rewrite. Maybe the camera vendor makes the model obsolete or is bought by a, one of their competitors or goes out of business. This also happens, uh, it's happened recently. Uh, in this case, you need to scope the market to find another camera which works and you need to rewrite. Or another camera vendor brings out a, a newer, better, faster, smaller, cheaper camera which you wish you'd known about when you started development. OK, in this case, you wish you didn't have to rewrite. You're, you're missing out on the, um, the development of the hardware. So what can you do? You see the risk. How can you mitigate it? Well, the first thing is start with standards. Standards are a nice way to avoid uh, being uh, dependent on one, uh, one manufacturer or indeed on one model. Um, the obvious one to choose these days is, is Genicam. And I use Genicam as, a, as a, a broader standard than just Gigi Vision or USB 3 Vision because it also supports CoExpress and some camera link and some other things as well. Um, but if you've started off with a manufacturer's SDK, you still have the problem of being tied to a manufacturer. So this means if they go out of business, you've still lost all your support. Hence, I have a solution, which is using standards, but there's still a problem. So where do you go from this? How do you get the advantages without the disadvantage? Support standards not be tied to a manufacturer. Can you see where this is going yet? Genicam support is a good thing. It's even more useful if you can support third-party GenTLs, Genicam transport layers. This gets you into camera link grabbers. It gets you into um, other devices which are somehow not Gigi Vision, USB 3 Vision. So, for example, the LMI Gokata uh, cameras. 
Intel RealSense, uh, 3D cameras as well. But then what about if you go beyond standards? What about if somebody brings out something which is not keeping to the standard? Well, what you'd quite like to do is have an easy changeover of types of device, um, which might mean area scan to line scan, or adding a grabber, or going from 2D to 3D, or hyperspectral, or any of the other uh, words you'll hear over these two days. Easy can mean one line of code. Or if you were careful about it, you could make it a variable. It's, uh, then it means no code changes. Suddenly everyone's smiling. This is a good thing. So, how do we do it? Common vision blocks, first of all, this is the sales bit. You've had the facts, this is the sales. Um, CVB is independent of hardware manufacturers, so we, we don't make cameras. We're part of the, uh, the Genicam committee, but we don't make cameras. Um, we support x86, by which I mean 32 and 64-bit Intel, uh, on Windows and Linux, also ARM Linux. And what we do is we have what we call a hardware ab abstraction layer. This is some kind of a translation layer where the standard commands that you want to get into a camera, we give them a standard format. So you don't have to know what camera A and camera B call the same thing. You just use the same command. Finally, supporting low power platforms, I mean low processing power. Um, CVB is famously fast and lightweight. We're very good at this. We know we're good at it. Um, and the final bits. CVB Camera Suite. I said this was the sales bit. Camera Suite is free with Genicam cameras from Stemmer. We provide it for free. You get a free license. We do this for our own benefit as well as for your benefit. We see as many customers who have the problem of being with camera one and they want to go to camera two, but they've developed everything for camera one. So you can't go to camera two. Uh, it's also good for us because we hope you'll buy camera two from us. But. The final part here, um, CVB image manager, which is the base part, uh, foundation package, which is the, the uh, bundle of fundamentals, um, and some of the high-end tools, including 3D, machine learning, and more as well, um, have increasing coverage on Linux, on all platforms. So this now means that we're bringing processing to multi-platform, as well as acquisition. Um, talk to me sometime other, some other time if you want to have more details about that. Thank you. I think I'm on time. <laughs>